if there is a 100 flat apartment association they have to typically spend 7 800 rupees only for scp maintenance for each flat per month in such cases what would they do they would simply tell the association we are not interested let us switch off our scp let us put it in bypass mode whatever water is coming is just going out when the municipality people or pollution control board people are coming for inspection we'll just pay them something and manage whether it is right or wrong i'm not getting into that we are not here to debate what is right and what is wrong we are only here to uh, discuss what can be the reason why stps fail and how to prevent that now finally cost now what is the meaning of cost the cost is multifold operator cost electricity bill spare parts cost then routine maintenance like you know media replacement painting pump repairs electrical spare parts repairs these are all the routine costs so these costs typically force even though a lot of us would like to run the stp uh, they would force us to switch off the stps despite of our right intentions so what is the solution now we understood the reasons the possible reasons probably we have explored more or less every reason under the sun but what is the solution how to solve this problem any ideas gentlemen from any of you okay uh, i can think of only one thing it is the buyer buyer of the stp who should be beware and aware as to why their stp is likely to fail and to he should he or she should take a right decision to prevent this from happening how is it possible for buyers to take um, you know get knowledge and become aware any product if it fails the buyer is responsible the seller responsibility comes later the buyer is supposed to take a learned decision understand what he is buying majority of the times here buyer is forced to understand quite a few things like the essential information that he needs to understand while going through a buying process is firstly he should understand why they are buying an stp what is the single most important reason the single most important reason people say is i want pollution control board or local municipality approval to run, uh, to complete my construction so i'm setting up an stp number one number two reason number one okay how does it impact if you go to large projects uh, MOEF, Ministry of Environment and Forest, is giving permission only for zero discharge STPs. That means all the treated water must be used on the project site itself. Is it possible? Technically, it is not possible. Okay, there are some efforts. We have also done some projects with zero discharge, but it comes at a high cost, which is typically not possible for 90% of the apartment owners. The second most important thing a STP buyer should know is what kind of technology I should need. I need to employ, deploy. What STP should I buy based on which technology? Is it MBBR, SBR, MBR, extended aeration, electrocoagulation, uh, Jokasu, or whatever it is? Which process is ideally suited for him? The third thing they should consider is what is the STP capacity? This is something very, very simple, but many a times we find that builders are not able to arrive at a right decision. Okay, then they also need to know what is the cost of owning an STP. When I'm saying owning, it is not the buying cost alone. It is the operating cost also. In large projects, the builder is given the responsibility to run the STP for five years. But here our focus is typically on our smaller projects, up to 100 KL, maybe 200 KL. So here the builder has to consider the cost of civil, that is tanks uh, uh, construction, as well as mechanical equipment cost. They can also consider the cost of land, how much land is getting uh, used for this process. Okay, now when you are considering these, there are also few other parameters which are not directly related, but impact the operation of the STP. Right. Uh, we have done a municipal STP of 
4.6 MLD using ultra modern SBR technology with uh, remote SCADA. But six months later, when I went to visit the project, the operators who were running the plant were illiterate people. Leave alone SCADA, nothing was operational. The moment the contractor handed over the project to the government department, they just switched off everything in the STP. The STP is just running in bypass mode. Only few pumps, if at all they have to run, they'll pump the sewage out from the intake well. Okay, that means the technology what we have installed there is not sustainable from operator point of view. In that remote town, there is no possibility of getting a SCADA operator. Right, so the government has not taken an appropriate decision or the contractor has not quoted the right kind of price. He did not consider the availability of local SCADA operators. Then he took a wrong decision. Then sustainability from cost perspective. Is it sustainable if it is going to cost X amount of money every month and this X amount of money is only going to increase by at least 15-20% year on year? Will the user be able to effort this? Third, environmental sustainability. That means I need to use this treated water for toilet flushing, for gardening, whatever purposes. Then I must go for technology which will give me higher quality of water. So these are the things that a builder needs to builder or a buyer needs to consider while discussing about a STP purchase. But builders have got a lot of other things to worry about. Building an STP is not their main business. It doesn't give them any revenue. So why they should spend so much time looking at this? So what do they do? They hire consultants. Most of the time we call these consultants MEP consultants, mechanical, electrical and plumbing consultants. If the project is big, maybe there is already a consultant onboarded. But here we are typically looking at 50 KL, 100 KL, maybe up to 200 KL projects. So MEP, a dedicated full time MEP consultant may be available, maybe not available. Okay. Now, what is the constraint for the consultant? Even when there is a consultant, the project is not successful, especially from STP point of view. STPs are still failing. Why is it so? Whenever I talk to MEP consultants, I have quite a few friends in that um, uh, segment. Wherever I work, I work with MEP consultants. So over a period of time, those guys become friends to me. So what complaint they give is they are not getting paid the right kind of fees. Per square feet, we get paid so much, which is not able, not enough to take care of our uh, staff overheads. So how can we go deep into the problem, study it, and you know give dedicated time and come up with the right solution to suit the site conditions? So they routinely recommend something which has worked. Their apprehension is if I suggest something new, if this fails, the builder will hold me accountable. I will not get future projects from them. So what do build uh, MEP consultants do? They will stick to a set of vendors. They will stick to a set of technologies, which have worked to a certain extent in the past. They keep their eyes closed for new things. Whether it suits the site or not, they would routinely recommend an MBBR. Where a SBR is required, they would typically recommend an MBBR. Who is going to question them? They are the ultimate authority. The builder does not know. Right. Some of you probably are MEP consultants. The, my idea is not to offend you. I'm just stating the facts. Okay. Now, who is responsible for all this mess? If buyer, it is a buyer's responsibility. When I hire somebody, whether he's giving me the right inputs or wrong inputs, I am the person who is buying and the buck stops with me. So likewise, if the STP is not working, whoever is responsible, the real responsibility might be that of your vendor. It could be that of your um, you know, MEP consultant or architect, whoever it is. Ultimately, the buck will stop with the builder. Whether it is pollution control board or any government department or even the users, they will hold the builder accountable. I have seen in Bangalore, in few projects, we get um, very strange calls from associations. Sir, our builder, we have a feeling that our members are feeling that our builder has uh, cheated us. He has put a, a under capacity STP. Can you come and do an inspection? Give us a report. This is the kind of uh, you know request we come across. Okay. Now, 
how builder should solve this problem builder is the owner he has to take a right decision let us see how world over this problem is not there only for india world over how is it solved let us look at other countries like us europe then maybe japan china okay let us look at how this problem is getting solved in those countries so that we can replicate their successful models in india most developed countries that means countries like us have low population density right that means in a square kilometer of land the amount of sewage generated is very very low if you took look at the example of us us is three times the geographical size of india and has less than 20%, 20% population we are 140 crores they are somewhere around 30 crores but size wise they are three to four times bigger than us so their population density is almost uh, 15% of our population density okay so when you have low population density you do not generate so much of sewage as we do in dense countries and developed countries like us also have stps but they charge exorbitant fees from the users and this fees directly goes to run the stps it is not used on other purposes municipalities spend a lot of money in disposing of solid waste as well as liquid waste in majority of the developed countries only in india municipalities feel it is not their job they just take it and throw away in some other place assuming that the shit is somebody else's it's not their job okay and we also have countries like japan japan is one exception to this rule okay what is it japan has done what are the similarities between india and japan both are high density population countries japan has almost a population of 8 crores very very small country compared to india so the population density is as much as india if not more okay so how did they solve this problem and their water resources are also limited although they have sea next to them they are surrounded by sea on all sides the problem came in early 60s when the population went through um, the roof that is the time they started addressing so they had a severe problem in late 70s so that is when they started spending lot of money on research and came up with solutions japan is typically 30 years ahead of india in terms of sewage treatment so today we are starting what japanese have done in 90s okay now what is it japan has done japan has done they have developed an advanced sewage treatment plant a very advanced sewage treatment plant something advanced at the same time very very simple lot of us find it very difficult to comprehend these two things if you have an advanced mobile phone this mobile phone is little bit more complicated it's not user friendly but the technology that japan has developed uses natural principles of uh, biological process and treats sewage at low cost low noise and economically and the sewage treatment plants that they have developed are something that can be produced mass in the factory there are 14 companies in japan which sell 1 lakh plus stps every year which have a manufacturing capacity of more than a lakh per annum they are calling this technology jokasu okay jokasu stands for purification tank in japanese language purification tank okay here i have shown the link of the japanese ministry of environment any of you interested please go to this site when you go to this site uh, this is what you will be seeing let me share the screen okay this is office for promotion of jukasu decentralized domestic wastewater treatment system please go to this url env.go.jp/recycle/jukasu/en okay there are few youtube videos how to install how to maintain how to desludge and there are also few things like you know uh, 
Jokasu Act. Now, when Japan came up with this Jokasu Law or Jokasu Act, as it is called, what does it mean? They have not only created a simple sewage treatment system, but they have also created a massive department to manufacture them, inspect them in production, install them, run them properly with periodic desludging and have inspectors. So they have created education for manufacturing, for installing, for operating, for desludging, and also to make sure that it is maintained in the right condition. So they have created a complete ecosystem. What is the problem for us here? We don't study about sewage treatment in any of our courses. There are no courses. It's oh, no, no, small... no. Sorry? We do have a small portion in civil engineering. Beyond that, we don't have a dedicated subject of STP maintenance, STP installation, how to design. Right. This is not educated to us anywhere in our formal education. Now, in the absence of this, our people don't feel like coming into this. Or none of our engineers want to come and work in STPs. As a STP manufacturer, when I call people for interviews, the moment we say our job is sewage treatment, people don't even come and attend the interview. Few people who come and attend ask what is the nature of the job and they go away. Right. So the problem is people have a taboo. They feel it is something wrong. By having a proper education system, what Japan has done is they have taken out the negativity about sewage treatment. Ultimately, sewage comes from human beings. It was there with us a few hours ago, right? We use the water to bathe. So what is wrong with that water? It is coming from our body only. OK, now moving forward, let me uh, go back to my presentation again. Right. Any of you interested, please go to this site and have a look. OK, and they have also created an ecosystem to sustain the sewage treatment process to produce. So they have made a law which manufacturer can manufacture STPs. What should be the quality standard? What are the test parameters and how to install it? Again, an equivalent of our ITI. Right. And there are operators and there are Jokasu in, in, installers. There are Jokasu inspectors. So whole range of ecosystem they have created, right? Using this Jokasu Act. Now, somebody was asking why a country like Japan would have so many STPs. Can anybody guess how many STPs are installed in Jap Japan? Maybe you can see this here. Total number of Jokasu is installed 75 lakhs 27,615. This is 2022 statistics. 75 lakh STP. Within this, again, some 47%, uh, that is 35 lakhs are old type and new type. New type is the one that has come in the last five years. They have again modified the system. Okay. So this is what is being worked in and this technology is sold in 30 plus countries why it is not there in india can anybody guess why it is not in india i do not know the exact reason but what i guess i might be offending some people when i say this is indian companies don't have social responsibility in india we have large water treatment companies like ion exchange thermax they could have tied up with a Japanese company and started manufacturing those STPs here. They are not bothered because this is small business for them. They want only big industrial projects. So it is left to companies like Indus Eco Water who feel socially responsible. We are the first company in India to bring Jokasu technology to India and launch it in India. It is purely out of my personal passion. My personal passion that STP when I sell should work. Today also, depending on case to case, we still sell. Recently, we picked up an order for uh, a 1MLD MBBR STP. Currently, we are executing 
uh, i think uh, one 650 kld sbr one 325 kld one 300 kld sbrs depending on the client requirement but our focus here is only on csvp <laughs> what is the reason it is simple for the user it is viable for the user it is sustainable for the user not for me if i sell jokasu or easy svp as we are calling it i don't make much money because i have a manufacturing unit which is churning out x quantity but i am able to sell only uh, 50% of my manufactured capacity so i lose money when i sell jokasu or easy whereas sbr spr we make little bit more money but personally i don't want to sell because i know pretty well that it is not viable the customer is going to buy from me because he has got sir. some complaints pressure in I the end it is not going to work okay this is the reason why we are little reluctant to recommend other technologies to users okay now how many of you would like to know more about other technologies like nbbr and spr please put it in the chat box so sumit ji kidhar ja rahe hain please put it in the chat box how many of you would like to know more about nbbr or spr yes thank you okay let me explain great okay great great okay fine let me explain what is sewage treatment and how it works sewage treatment basically is nothing but a basic naturally occurring process we take a lump of sugar let us say jaggery ka ek lump le liya we put it on a kitchen platform in few minutes time you will find ants coming and eating that in few minutes time you will find flies coming and sitting on that and eating okay why does this happen for every living thing there are two instincts one is survival instinct that means they have to survive second is they have to grow procrastination right and what is required for survival survival requires food and also survival requires oxygen any living thing would probably need these two things with the exception of trees okay trees take carbon dioxide and give us oxygen it's the reverse okay now whenever we are talking about a biological process what it simply means is there is some kind of organic content what is there in sewage let us look at the composition of sewage sewage is 99.95% water and 0.05% impurity what is this impurity this impurity is nothing but the food that we have eaten the soap that we have used the oil that we have consumed let us say we made coffee we had coffee we washed the cup there are some traces of coffee inside the coffee cup when you wash it using a soap this traces of this containing some milk sugar or fat are going into the water right this is this is nothing but organic matter organic matter what is the exact uh, definition of organic matter any science student would have remembered about organic chemistry carbon and hydrogen chemistry is called organic chemistry any molecule that is having carbon and hydrogen is a organic molecule why organic molecules are important all living things are built with organic molecules carbon and hydrogen okay they contain energy they contain protein we eat chicken mutton vegetables wheat rice they all contain some amount of protein that's energy for us it is all organic okay so wherever there is energy a living thing will come and eat it right you might find sometimes um, the fecal matter of human beings being consumed by pigs when we eat some food our body absorbs the energy in the food there is still some small element of amount of energy left in the uh, fecal matter that has come out from our body pigs have a stronger digestive system so they consume and they can still get little bit more energy from the fecal matter that has come from human beings you find some dogs also eating human shit okay so 
it is a natural principle for living things like it could be something like a bacteria to come and eat wherever there is energy so wherever there is energy this is called organic organic molecule organic content whatever name you will give it okay this is present in water when this is present in water that water becomes sewage the second thing that is coming and getting added to water is our soap soap contains a chemical called lab linear alkyl benzene this is a chemical most soaps have and soaps also have a lot of fat okay so when you wash soap what is it that is happening is there a chemical reaction on your body and um, soap no what is happening is this fat is generating foam this foam is trapping the dust particles and grease particles from your body or from your clothes or from your utensils and taking away into the water there is no chemical reaction it is simply a physical reaction okay so where does this go it all this goes into sewage so when you say sewage sewage contains chemicals which are coming from soaps second it contains organic molecules whenever there is organic molecule some bacteria would come and eat this bacteria could be present in air it this bacteria could be present in water this bacteria could be present in some other food right so what we do if you look at any major river including ganga and uh, yamuna and our hyderabad mosi this water carries if you look at civilizations world over every civilization is built next to a river today we have means of bringing water to large distances imagine 500000 years ago there was no possibility of water being transported large distances people had to live as close to the river as possible so that they will go and get the water okay so all civilizations developed next to rivers what is the disadvantage from this all the waste water coming from that civilization including our harappa mohenjodaro civilization was going into the river okay now delhi sewage goes into yamuna and yamuna becomes clean by the time it reaches agra by the time it travels hyderabad entire sewage goes and joins a river called mosi and where does this mosi river go this mosi will go and join krishna river some place, some place after 120 kilometers and this krishna river is a drinking water source for vijayawada guntur ongol and even cities like chennai okay what is happening nature is doing its job whenever we talk about sewage we discuss that it is 99.95% water and 0.05% impurity these impurities are of two types the first type is the physical impurity which is coming from a fruit vegetable or broken rice or whatever some part of uh, food particle which is in a physical seeable particle that we can see with naked eye when the river velocity is more this is getting carried away when the river slows down this particle just settles to the ground so more clearer water is flowing so whatever contamination was there in the form of physical impurities nature has settled them on the river bed so by the time a 50 km journey has taken place the water has become relatively clear the second thing that is happening is water is a source for large quantity of aquatic living things including bacteria virus frogs fish what not or even as a matter of fact life came from water life originated on this earth life originated from water there are there are more living things in water compared to earth okay so this water even when it is having dissolved organic content by the time it reaches long distances the bacteria present in the water would have eaten that organic content thereby making the water relatively in less impure okay so sewage when it started journey in hyderabad by the time it reached surya pet a proper drinking water source okay traditionally without our realizing we are all drinking raw untreated sewage shocking news but that's a fact okay every major river is carrying untreated sewage of all upstream sounds uh, towns we take ganga ganga carries with it 350 plus municipal corporations 
raw sewage okay now when we talk about a treatment nature does a job but what are we doing in a treatment plant we are doing the same thing but we are speeding up the process because we don't have so much of time how do we do that we create similar conditions where bacteria can grow faster and eat what we want to take out from water okay sounds very simple but when it comes into practice there are few intricacies so how do we do this we have two different type of bacteria called aerobic bacteria and anaerobic bacteria aerobic bacteria is something that requires an external source of oxygen anaerobic bacteria is something that does not require a external source of oxygen right probably it breaks down uh, water molecule and uh, takes oxygen from that right moving forward there are two types of technologies attached growth suspended growth so first concept is first concept you would have understood by now is we require bacteria to treat sewage irrespective of the process whether you call it mbbr sbr jokasu easy stp whatever technology mbr any technology you name it depends only on one thing called bacteria you just have to grow bacteria so that that bacteria will eat what you want to take out from water in one sentence this is sewage treatment okay now how many bacteria are required how much time is required for this process to happen is it there, is a, there are some small scientific calculations some formulas as you would say scientific calculations might be a big word to use but some small formulas so every stp vendor uses these formulas and calculates how much tank capacity should be there how the process is going to happen okay so two things are required for every um, stp you would require bacteria and you would require oxygen for that bacteria to keep it alive so concept number 1 attached growth what is the meaning of attached growth see bacteria is very very small it's a unicellular organism it is not visible to our naked eye so if the bacteria is there in the water when the water goes out bacteria is also going out so every day if bacteria is going out your treatment cannot take place properly you don't have sufficient quantum of bacteria so somebody thought let me put some physical medias like you know stones or um, some plastic ropes sheets anything so that the bacteria will attach to that and grow this is called attached growth concept of attached growth so initially they started with uh, metal metal means stone kankar they started with that so water was flowing through kankar between the gaps the bacteria was getting attached to the stones so some other person thought maybe uh, this is very crude it's not uh, really working out let us make this more robust so what they did they put started putting some plastic sheets okay the kind of sheets that you use in a cooling tower if any of you have seen cooling tower media uh screen is not visible how many of you are not seeing screen please madan you are able to see our screen yes sir yes sir okay yes sir uh, mr kulkarni is not able to see the screen mr kulkarni the problem seems to be at your end please check up maybe a network issue at your end sir i have a question about jokasu ha huh, please go ahead let, let, can we just hold these questions till the last moment sir maybe another sure. 10 minutes i'll be done sure, sure, then sure, we, are, we are open for questions i'll answer all your questions okay sir i'm there sorry, is no sir. time constraint for me okay okay sir thank you so much for considering okay now we are talking about attached growth versus suspended growth when there is no uh, media in water the bacteria is there in water whenever water is flowing out the bacteria is getting washed away so what you have to do you have to build huge tanks so some scientists start by putting some kind of plastic media into this something like plastic sheets right he will create more surface area for bacteria to grow it will attach to that plastic sheet and grow faster and the bacteria will remain in water in, without going out when the treated water is going out okay so they started using this plastic media used in our cooling towers if you look at a process called saf suspended aerated fixed film attached growth s a f f this process is nothing but plastic sheets are kept inside sewage treatment tank that is a aeration tank or bioreactor tank okay 
But then few problems came up. There were gaps between these plastic sheets. The plastic sheets were getting damaged when you are giving air from the tank bottom, right? The sludge was getting uh, uh, between the sheets and choking the passage of air. So within few years, people realized this is not the process, ideal process. This can be improved upon. So somebody else came up with one more thing. He called something called a moving bed bioreactor. They started putting a, a 25 mm diameter wheel kind of thing, plastic wheel, on which there are gear kind of small uh, striations are there. The idea of putting that uh, baffle on a, on a gear is when air is coming from the bottom, this is rotating. When this is rotating, any excess bacteria is attached to that, that goes off. So dead bacteria is continuously getting washed away. Okay, so this is about MBBR as well as SAF. Now there is a process concept called continuous process and batch process. What is the difference between continuous process and batch process? Any process, the fundamental concept of sewage treatment is it works with living thing. There are living bacteria inside water. But there will be some cases, like if you look at a hotel, hospital, you don't know how many guests are going to be there tomorrow, how many patients are going to be there tomorrow. So the quantum of sewage generated varies on a day-to-day -day basis. If you look at a restaurant also, today more people would go there on weekends, remaining weekdays, less people would go. Same logic applies to a resort. So the sewage loads are fluctuating. They are going up and down. So what some other scientists thought, why not have a batch process? Instead of a continuous process, I'll have a batch process. So they divided the sewage into three or four batches. Let us say you have a 150 KLD STP. Make it into three batches. So 24 hours, three batches means each batch is of eight hours. And 150 KL, three batches means each batch is of 50 KL. So you have to treat 50 KL water in about eight hours time. So what is the benefit here? Till you have a next batch 50 KL, your process will not begin. Okay, there are ways and means to keep your bacteria alive. But what is the benefit here? In the initial days when the project is new, you are not getting sufficient load. This works wonderfully well. And whenever you don't have much of load, this saves on power. But by nature, this has more automations, more equipments. When there is more equipment, there is more maintenance. The operator intervention is more. Operator technical knowledge has to be at a higher level. So SBR, sequential batch reactor, or some people call it sequencing batch reactor, whatever name we might use, but it is a batch process. MBBR, activated sludge process, these are all continuous processes. Some people ask me, how is MBR different compared to MBBR and SBR? By the name MBR, membrane bioreactor. In this, what we are doing, membrane bioreactor is nothing but it is a MBBR STP. In the end, instead of having a uh, you know settling tank in that place, you had installed a submerged membrane. So that membrane is continuously extracting treated water, high quality water. The biological process, there is no substitute. MBBR and MBR both have same biological process. Only in the end, instead of having a sand and carbon filter, you have a membrane. Okay. So 95% of STP processes use biological process, whether it is aerobic, anaerobic, continuous, or batch, or uh, suspended, or attached, or a combination of all these things. Now, the latest development in sewage treatment is something called hybrid technology. Today is a world of hybrid. Everything new that comes up is hybrid. A lot of the vegetables that we are eating, the plants that we are eating, the pulses, the wheat that we are eating, these are all hybrid. What is the meaning of hybrid? Some disadvantage in a process taken out, modified, genetically modified, improved. So that improved version is called hybrid. What are these hybrid processes? Hybrid processes are a combination of aerobic and anaerobic process, are a combination of suspended and detached growth, are a combination of something else. It is not one process. It is two processes brought together. Okay. Uh, 
any any doubts on mbb or spr before we move on to something else did i clarify or you need a bit more uh, deeper understanding clear please please uh, share in the chat box please okay now most municipalities in india which technology do they use they use a process called sbr now the municipal sbr is different from a 50 kld 100 kld sbr that we use in a apartment complex municipal stps are typically designed for lower biological loads the input bod is generally considered under 150 170 whereas in an apartment where there is a closed loop the water that is coming is fresh the suspended solids are still there in that whereas in a municipality the suspended solids would have settled because the water travels the sewage travels long distances okay so there the sewage loads are lesser the organic content loads are lesser there are no collection tanks in municipal stps there is only a collection sump typically this sump is called a wet well this is very deep 5 to 6 meters below ground level sewage comes there it gets pumped down to a a batch reactor why batch reactor like we all know sewage uh, flows are not uniform in 24 hours do you have to two peaks morning peak and evening peak morning between 7 and 10 we generate about 30 40% of water again from 6 to 9 we generate another 20% of water the remaining 40% comes in the remaining almost 18 hours so the flows are not uniform so when you have a batch process it becomes easy for you to manage uneven flows so normal sbr stp in an apartment probably would have one batch rea reactor whereas municipal stp would have two batch reactors one is getting filled at any point of time the second one is undergoing Same process okay when i am saying a reactor it is nothing but a tank into which you are giving sewage there is a sludge or mbbr media or saf media whatever some media on on which there is bacteria so this bacteria is eating this uh, organic content that is coming in the fresh sludge okay so process is not important whichever process all processes have some advantages some disadvantages there is nothing like an ideal process what we have to see when we are deciding on an stp for our site is what are our site conditions what are our specific site conditions right specific site conditions means like we discussed earlier if it is a villa project we are in a low noise low ambient noise area so if you are going for a conventional mbbr sbr process there you use tanks with at least 3.5 4 meters water column we use blowers called twin lobe rotary air blowers these twin lobe rotary air blowers generate lot of sound lot of vibrations okay this will be disturbing to uh, neighbors and from my experience of working in stps for over 20 years now what i have seen is i also get calls from potential villa customers people who want to buy a villa sometimes they would call and ask me uh, my i am looking at buying an sp uh, buying a villa next to the stp what will be the problems right many a times i have seen builders selling off villas next to stps at steep discounts because nobody wants to buy a villa a luxury villa right next to the stp stps are so notorious okay they make noise they may they generate foul smell they generate vibrations but that is all past technology has come only thing is everybody will ask where is this technology working where is it proven right but unless somebody starts somewhere how is it possible for us as manufacturers or for somebody else as manufacturer to showcase and demonstrate we need to take a learned calculated uh, risk right you have seen how many stps japan has we still have on the uh, screen 76 lakh stps being in use in japan using jokasu technology so we have to trust if we don't trust 76 lakh people it's, it's difficult for us to trust anything and on other hand 
we have technologies like MBBR, SBR, which have been used extensively and failed extensively. 80% failure rate. Okay. Now, second question. How, to, how do site conditions impact my STP selection? Suppose you are in a place where uh, you are constructing a hospital or a hotel or a function hall. Your loads are not uniform. Then if you are not considering Jokasu, you should always consider SBR. If you are a school, for example, you should not be looking at MBBR. If you are an apartment, you should be ideally looking at MBBR because low maintenance compared to SBR, MBBR has lesser amount of automation because it's a continuous process. It goes on. In SBR, there are sensors for everything. How much water has come into the tank, depending on the level, the process will begin. So what happens? All these automation, while it works well, at some stage, at, on one day, every equipment is going to fail. Whether it can happen after one year, two years, three years, ten years, is not in our control. But any equipment is bound to fail. So keeping that in mind, apartments should go for MBBR. Varying fluctuation loads like hotels, hospitals, uh, function halls should go for SBR. This is a thumb rule. Where you require ultra high quality water, there is no water in your area. It's always better to go for membrane bioreactor. Okay. Within that, again, membrane bioreactors, you have people are calling submerged membrane bioreactor, people are calling this uh, side stream uh, bioreactor. All these things, parameters are there. This any ETP consultant or your MEP consultant would be able to advise better. And any of you have any kind of problem about your particular site conditions, want to discuss, please feel free. I'm available. I want to share my knowledge with uh, uh, real users so that they get the benefit. Whether you buy the STP from me is the second thing. You are always welcome. You are invited to talk to me, clarify all your doubts. Not only now. Now we want to make this a weekly feature. I'm asking my uh, sales team to have a at least a weekly or uh, bi-weekly meeting with my potential customers. The idea is only to keep the STPs functional. If I sell something that doesn't work, I don't feel good about it. Right. So I want to sell STPs that work. Let us move on to questions, gentlemen. Please go ahead with your questions. You can ask, you can type it in the chat box. Hello. Uh, Madan, who was the gentleman who was asking question? Uh, Mr. Kulkarni, you are asking some question. Uh, Kulkarni ji, you are asking some question. Anybody else? Meanwhile, any questions? Sir, I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead, sir. Uh, like what? Uh, so the company that you have deals with Jokasu technology, right? Yes. And uh, like, uh, I just want to know what uh, is the like uh, costing for a project like for a one MLD plant? Okay, one MLD generally is a municipal STP, right? Okay. Very okay. It is a, uh, apartment kind of thing. Now, okay. why we are not recommending municipal STPs, Jokasu for municipal STPs is whenever you are quoting for a municipal STP, you are quoting based on what the tender, what the government has asked in the tender, right? Right. Right. In the tender, they would have specified MBBR or SPR or sometimes even extended aeration. Okay. So okay. you have if, to see uh, the tender conditions. All right, all right. So there's like for mostly for private. Uh, yes. Plan. So we we are trying. If you look at our um, uh, you know government rules, our in the in India, sewage treatment is handled by Ministry of Environment and Forest or Ministry of Urban Development. Okay. Okay. Ministry of Urban Development has come out with 
uh, it has got a department called central central public health engineering organization cpheeo so central, can you say that again central public health engineering organization cpheeo cpheeo right this cpheeo is the uh, designing authority for all water related structures in the country when i am saying water related they are also related to drinking water transportation of water treatment of water treatment of sewage treatment of sludge so everything is as per the manuals of cpho if you would like to have one sample i can uh, attach one sample here if you would like to download okay okay so uh, uh, if you can do that i'll download so uh, yeah. so cpheo cpheo okay. Okay, so my next question, like, what's the minimum capacity that you guys sell? Uh, at at present, we have six KLD, six thousand liters per day. Six KLD. Yes. Six KLD, and how much? Like, that's the minimum size of the uh, STP that you guys sell, right? Exactly. And like, how much would a six KLD cost for like, and how much space will it take? Six KLD is a very small compact tank. The advantage or the benefit of Jokasu system is. from one end you give the sewage from the other end you get the treated water out there are compartments not visible to you from outside internally there are compartments typically any stp would have five different compartments the first okay. compartment would be a, a primary settling tank the second compartment would be a, a anaerobic digester third one would be a aerobic digester fourth one would be a settling tank fifth one would be a disinfection chamber Right, six so. six KLD would be of four meters long and two meters diameter. It is a like a petroleum tanker, you can say. Okay, that is it. That is it. That's it. Can it be installed at houses as well? Like, is it like uh, is it more for a house as in like uh, no. for like no. uh, for, for a house, house where like seven people are living? I'd say. See, look at this. Any any house on an average, any person. in india would generally generate something like 150 liters if you have a hydro pneumatic system at your home that means water is coming at a very high velocity if you are living in an independent house a luxury independent house you would probably have a pneumatic system so the pneumatic system is pumping out more water when you open your shower it is giving out more water okay right so your water quantity is certainly more but your organic load is same okay the quantum of soap that you would use the quantum of uh, water that comes out when you wash a cup of coffee when you wash a utensil everything is remains the same if when you use a pneumatic system you are diluting sewage but otherwise okay. the organic content is same okay okay so on an average a person uses 150 liters if there are seven people in the house seven multiplied by 150 is 1050 1050 liters so at the most you can round it up to 1000 liters so 1000 liters we do have smaller systems like 2000 liters but we are not actively promoting that because it would still require the same kind of headache for us you know going understanding the site conditions installing right right right, right. but so at, a, a, at a later date what we want to do is we want to see that every house has an stp that is our long term goal like japan yeah. india is a bigger country and with lot of uh, purchasing power need so that's true sir so how much like like If the six six KLD plant is the minimum size right now, exactly. Like what all like you know type of facilities do you sell these plants like as in like malls etc. Like, uh, can you elaborate when you say facilities? As in like uh, the six KLD plant that your company sells. Okay. These the the potential clients are hospitals and. Uh, no, 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 no. Six KLD is generally for a very small apartment complex. very small apartment complex or maybe a function hall very small one we don't sell many uh, most of the time they go for project sites so if you look at my client profile godrej is a number one customer buying my 6k ld stps and where would they put this uh, companies like godrej what they do is whenever they are constructing a new big project residential project they set up a site office huh. okay site office then the labor camp a labor camp would have a slightly larger capacity of stp Whereas the okay. site office would have a, a smaller capacity STP. Okay, and what would be the like cost of this minimum size STP, STP of your company? They go for uh, they start from six point five lakhs onwards. 
6.5 lakhs onwards and how much is the yearly maintenance cost for these if you look at 6k ld it uses air blowers it uses a very small air blower of 120 uh, watts it uses three numbers of 120 watt blowers so roughly you can say 120 into 3 is uh, 360 so every 3 hours of operation it consumes one unit of power so in a day it consumes eight units of power okay eight units of power my question was uh, like how much maintenance does it need like does it need like regular visit from the people from your company for servicing no. like how often is the servicing required that is so what, what it it has maintenance uh, when i am saying maintenance let me explain madan meanwhile please share our old brochure and new brochure as an attachment here uh, kulkarni ji uh, this process is explained very clearly in our brochure kindly have a look at it and i'll clarify the doubts uh, once you have a look at that uh, and as for your question what would be the maintenance see we are growing bacteria here in any process yes sir right and there will be suspended solids which are coming from our home like our food etc the residual food vegetables fruits fruit peelings right hmm. these would be deposited in the first chamber that is why we are calling it a primary settling tank this first chamber has to be emptied once in 6 months you have to call a septic tanker and get it emptied okay the tanker tractor mounted tanker will come it will remove the water and discharge in a suitable place okay, okay. now when that is happening uh, our person should be there for the first one or two times okay okay then it also has chlorine tablets used in the process in the end before the water goes out for discharge it might still have certain amount of live bacteria so we don't right. want this live bacteria to go out into the environment we want to destroy right. so we just right. add chlorine tablets in regular okay. stps they put liquid chlorine here we add chlorine tablets the idea is okay. avoid mechanical equipment okay the chlorine tablets are there in a bottle water is flowing through the bottle the chlorine is slowly getting dissolved into the water okay so when it comes to the maintenance part of it once in 15 days you have to look at the chlorine tablets or maybe at the most 6 scale means once in a month is also okay once in a month you just have to add some chlorine tablets to the process okay which is like some like rupees in hundreds like something uh, like that chlorine tablets the same tablets that you use in your swimming pool if you are using a swimming pool in your apartment or independent house complex actually also you use chlorine powder some form of powder <coughs> you know? uh, i don't know if they put tablets here no they put they tablets add... but the powder that you are Actu- talking about is alum <coughs> Actu- sir i belong to kanpur uh, up so okay, sir. sir my question is like <coughs> there is a huge problem of electricity over there okay so if i try to sell these <coughs> there okay uh, like what is the like it won't work without electricity and while electricity is not there water will still be being used right right so uh, in that case how what will happen so like the water will like the, uh, the waste water will directly flow to the channels <coughs> uh what kind of application do you have in mind like is it a independent house or apartment complex or like it's it's like it's like a six floor like six flat building i'd say suppose it's six flat building right if you have a six flat building probably you'd have a backup generator with a lift and all that right okay so for small small places like uh, families yeah. like living nuclearly they'll uh, the waste from their houses will go directly to the stream then that time see if you are looking at a independent house let us say at a later date at some point of time we will come up with even 500 liter stps okay 500 liters per day which is targeted towards a small independent house a 2 bhk independent house also will have its own stp in the next 3 4 5 10 years i don't know when it will happen but it will happen it's a matter of time right for such people we have two options one is if there is a 500 liters per day stp it would probably consume 120 watts of power one where there is a power problem you can have a solar uh, panel of sufficient rating to back it up so that you are not un- you're not using a grid power at all our second option is use it as a backup when there is a power failure did i answer your question hello <coughs> hello 
or then am i audible yes sir you are audible sir okay okay fine <coughs> okay um kulkarni ji if you had a look at that uh, you could sir, explain clearly uh, this is zubair here this ah, side please, please go ahead please go ahead sir Uh, sir, Zubair here, sir. Ah, Zubair. Uh, like, I have one small doubt, sir. <laughs> yeah, Zubair, how are you doing? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Actually, like, uh, suppose if we have, we are having some uh, higher capacity. I'm good, sir. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Zubair. Thank you so much for asking. Okay, what capacity you have in mind? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, suppose like uh, presently, like we are having some project which requires a capacity of uh, 50 kld STP. Okay. And uh, can we go with the smaller uh, blowers to that, sir, or what capacity? Because when we are going for a higher blowers with a lower RPM, okay. blowers are uh, like uh, running good. But can we go with a lower capacity of air blowers to that, sir? No. Uh, let me explain why uh, you are looking at a 50 kV STP with MBBR SBR or uh, SBR, sir. SBR. See the problem with SBR yes, is <clears throat> to save on. footprint to reduce the size of the stp what designers would do is they'll go for deeper water columns right your water yes, column sir. will be at least 3.5 meters in your sbr stp okay now the deeper is your water the higher is the pressure Absolutely. your blower requires your blower should give at least 4k 4.4 kg or 4 meters of pressure it has to generate and these low capacity blowers that we use in our easy stp are not rated for that kind of deeper water columns okay okay so okay. Uh, conventional blowers only have to be used the moment you cross 2.5 meters 2.5 okay. is the threshold anything be- deeper than 2.5 meters you have to use a uh, centrifugal blower okay sir thank you sir okay thank you <laughs> Hello, sir. sir sorry, my uh, battery died. I was like, uh, we were talking about your plant, six KLD plant. I was. Ji ha, ji ha. Sorry, yeah, sir. Please. So, sir, my question is, like, uh, is it like viable to import Jukasu technology from companies from Japan and sell it in here in India? Like, I know that I am asking a question that's against your business. No, no, no. There is nothing like that. Please understand. There yes, are sir. people who are manufacturing. There is a company called Daiki Axis which manufactures in India. What's the name of the company? Daiki Axis. This There is, is no like idea. a Japanese it company. Is, it is a Japanese company which has set up a factory in India recently. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Now there are few other people who tried importing who are still importing, right? Okay. For them, the product gets sold on the strength of my कुछ imported चीज बेच रहा हूँ. Right, right. लोगों के ऐसी होता है कि कुछ इंपोर्टेड है तो वो बेटर है राइट राइट बट द प्रॉब्लम विद एस टी पी सी इज दे आर ह्यूज टैंक्स राइट द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट इज ह्यूज मेक सेंस मेक सेंस दैट इज रीजन एनीथिंग दैट यू इंपोर्ट जनरली इज मोर एक्सपेंसिव मोर कॉस्ट विच इज मैनुफैक्चरिंग इन इंडिया कंपेयर टू इम्पोर्टेड इट इज मोर कॉस्ट Uh, right. Ram Krishna, here the question is: Manufacturer looks at volumes, right? Mm-hmm. Manufacturer, when you set up a facility, you have to sell in certain quantity. When you are not able to sell at that quantity, what happens? Your cost of production goes up. Mm-hmm. In India, uh, typically, I... raw material prices are higher. Just to give an example, recently we supplied uh, 265 kld one number and 165 kld one one set to Bangalore. Per truck, I paid sixty-five thousand rupees. Each truck was carrying a fifty kld STP from Hyderabad to Bangalore, hardly six hundred kilometers. I had to pay sixty-five thousand rupees only towards transport. Now, who is going to pay the sixty-five thousand rupees? Same thing happened. If we are importing it, it is the more cost. Yes. That, that thing okay. I am. Okay. Okay. So that is like uh, because the volume of the size of the product is really big, so the costing costing is in cubic meters. Right. So the costing will go higher. Right. Okay. And so so many times, the more more, more than the ocean freight, and more than the if you look at uh, how the uh, freight economics work, uh, one of my friend recently imported one consignment from Germany, okay. one container. Okay. Right. 
this landed in chennai okay his chennai to hyderabad and truck was more expensive compared to the container coming from germany to chennai <laughs> i get it, sir i do import material from other countries as well okay. so i kind of have an idea how freights work you know uh, by the by by any chance like do you ever like visit here in pune so we are selling in pune sir no no like do you personally visit pune or what yeah 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 i keep coming at least once in 3 4 months okay 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 i'd really love to meet you sir you know uh, like uh, we can we can talk and uh, uh, see where because i'm i'm handling i'm in the northern part of india right now i'm like located in pune but i'll be going back some time or the other you know back to my state that is uttar pradesh Okay. and uttar pradesh has a lot of gap in this sense i'd say you know i understand yes yeah, so, so i would really love to meet you and uh, have a chat about how we can work out your technology over there and are you uh, in the business of water treatment at this point of time water or waste water uh, right now we just into chemicals so i am from a chemical background so okay nice. uh, my i have a family which is into chemicals dealing into textile and leather industry and we are also into wastewater treatment chemicals which is mostly alum and polyelectrolyte you know right so that is what we do and i am really interested in this uh, line of work so okay. i was wondering you know how so let us have how... a one to one chat uh, this business looks great from outside but again uh, you need to focus a lot in this there is lot of potential but uh, scaling up is always a challenge right, right. right so uh, we will discuss this in uh, private yes, maybe sir. i'll ask my team to take your contact number and uh, we'll connect see how uh, we can move forward together okay by the way ram krishna from your company only recommended me that i join this webinar okay so because of him only i am here uh, nice. actually we're in the same course right now okay so this is my class kind of you know nice very nice yes sir. so it's nice to know that you know you are going and learning something something to do with water and waste water yes sir feels that, good too sir feels good to me too <laughs> okay great all right sir that was all my questions uh, thank you for your support sir you are welcome sir okay. uh, kulkarni ji any questions from your side sir gentlemen any other questions from anyone Sir, uh, I have one small doubt, sir. Like uh, we have taken one Daiki access STP okay. for about fifteen KLD, okay. and uh, like after putting all the like we have installed ultra filtration, we have installed uh, ozonator to that also. Okay. Even though we are not getting the water quality, sir, uh, like uh, we are uh, not able to understand. So we even called Daiki people there. Okay. So they even tried again. Uh, they are telling that. They, they want they wanted to replace the entire unit so i was like literally like uh, shock on that so this want to know like uh, what, what could be the reason sir uh, see knowing daiki access and knowing japanese uh, passion for technology i don't think there would be anything wrong with the stp so probably it is a site conditions or maybe there is more water being generated than uh, the stp installed the capacity could be a problem okay so that's one of the issues where is your manufacturing unit sir they have a manufacturing unit in uh, surat if i remember and one more is coming up in goa no no where is your manufacturing unit hyderabad hyderabad our unit Hyder is in hyderabad hyderabad okay yes okay so <clears throat> so you better look at the inflow water inflow if possible install one water meter and see yes sir. that that should be able to give you and uh, ultimately ultra filtration and all are only filtrations which are coming at the end of the treatment they have got nothing yes, to do sir. with the treatment it's only better filtration after the process is done so if the process is wrong ultra filtration will not do anything okay sir it is a biological uh, process that has to work first Sure, sir. I'll I'll check with the I'll put a like a flow meter first at yeah. the start of this GPS and see how much flow. That will be an eye opener for you. I'm very sure, sure. about this. But even sure. when you call Daiki people, they also should have uh, comment. Uh, you know, looked at the side. They should have told you at least looking at the what kind of project is this. 
sir actually we have installed this for one of the com company but it okay. is only for sewage like uh, this is not for the etp only for sewage for their washrooms and all we have used uh, put this 15 kld uh, in, a factory, uh, in a factory yes right? sir in a factory okay see my experience yes. um, in working in factories is uh, see you know we both work together we also yes, went to yes, factories in yes, factories sir. there are a lot of leakages in taps yeah absolutely sir If people break uh, tap sometimes the tap doesn't work it doesn't close so even in our factory into our stp also a lot of excess water goes many a times yes people sir. just forget you know flush tank ka wo dabaya wo band nahi hua barabar se pani jata hai okay this kind of things are the main issues culprits okay sure so then i'll i'll make sure that uh, i'll make them notice and check check once everything depending on the just process. just look at the flow that that will give you that sure idea. sir sure sir i'll do that sir okay uh, any other questions gentlemen any on anything any water related uh, topic i would love to answer so good evening good evening sir Uh, sir, uh, that bifurcation you told us, na no, sir, like for uh, apartments, this technology to use, and for uh, restaurants and all, uh, which technology to use, sir? That can you repeat, sir? Okay. See, apartments basically have more or less a uniform flow. That means if you have installed a 50 kld SCP, assuming 50 kld to be your uh, uh, sewage load, your occupancy does not vary much. You would probably have 90, 95%. it varies 5 5% plus or minus it is more or less stable okay sir so go okay. for some some simpler continuous process like mbbr mbbr is a simple process that means continuously you are pumping water from your collection tank into the aeration tank from the aeration tank overflow is going into settling tank the settling tank overflow is going into a, a pre filter tank right sir from pre filter tank you are taking it through sand and carbon filter as a treated water you are disposing of so this is a 24/7 ongoing process whereas in the same apartment if you are keeping an sbr somebody some vendor came and told you sbr is better suited or some government official told you go for sbr it is latest technology then what happens you are dividing your 50 kld into 17 kl 18 kl batches now how does the system know that your batch is uh, ready for processing there are sensors okay these sensors don't work in water properly if you look at a uh, lot of uh, overhead tank sensors a lot of overhead tanks are overflowing bore well is not getting switched off although they will have a water level controller and all that okay this kind of sensors sensors don't work properly because of the scaling issues because of oil issues right and stp operators are not educated people so they won't be able to diagnose the problem and address it correctly in mbbr there is very little scope for that guy to address typically nothing much can go wrong because there is no automation and in restaurants hotels actually they don't call it stp they call it etp effluent treatment plant in restaurant wastewater the oil content and food content is extremely high if you look at bod load we measure it in bod load bod oil and uh, grease bod will be in above uh, in excess of 800 mg per liter whereas domestic sewage the bod will be 200 225 250 at the most 250 okay that means typically restaurant wastewater has three times the organic content so if you are installing an stp there you have to size it three times if you are generating 10 kl of restaurant waste water you need to put up a 30 kld stp to treat that water because of the higher organic content and it is also advisable to have properly designed oil system before the sewage goes into the stp the oil is something very very difficult for uh, bacteria to digest <clears throat> even human beings we have such big body and you know digestive capacity if you are having a oil rich food maybe a biryani and all that have a heavy lunch you feel your stomach is full you can't eat anything in the night your digestive system slows down so bacteria cannot assimilate oil so they'll struggle so as a result what happens your treated water still has a small quantity of oil so you are not getting properly treated water you get only partially treated water 
did this answer okay, your sir. question yes yes sir so you something like an oil and grease trap we need a properly designed oil and grease trap and one more problem in resident waste water is resident waste water generally has higher temperature at higher temperatures oil and water mix they don't separate only when the temperature comes to uh, ambient temperature that is room temperature oil starts floating so when you are designing your oil and grease trap go for deliberately higher capacity if it is a restaurant at least go for three times the conventional uh, design that means in a stp if you design for 15 minutes of retention time in a restaurant ttp you need to design at least for 45 minutes of retention time in oil and grease tank okay Uh, thank you sir uh, sir uh, can we go with uh, like our jataso technology okay for uh, like a large for uh, what do you say this uh, large hotels will be there no? like bigger hotels yes sir like where you can be people will stay and all so in that places can we go with jataso technology sir why not uh, it is seaway only yes sir okay. but so even though they will have this restaurant also sir and no, like uh, right now we are working with one stp one client uh, okay. so uh, we, he has not decided the technology yet so he is telling us to go with uh, he is having approximately like uh, 50 rooms uh, and yeah. a 100 seater capacity of uh, restaurant okay yes sir so can we go with uh, jakaso technology sir because we have enough space Oh, okay. so he was telling I don't want to do any civil work, and he doesn't want to see any equipment above the ground. So Chubai, I was suggesting to go with the casco. Yes, sir. irrespective of the technology, you can go for SPR, MBBR, MBR, any technology. But you have to take out two things first. One is your excess oil and sir. grease that comes from your restaurant. You have a hundred seater restaurant, right? Yes, sir. Hundred seater restaurant. and this kind of uh, hotels will also have lot of functions happening events every weekend that they have yeah, a marriage function some birthday function they live on functions practically right yes so you need to have a primary settling tank right which will take out Sir. all your excess food excess oil and grease then allow the water to get into the stp irrespective of technology whether you go for sbr mbbr otherwise any technology you put it is okay. not going to work properly okay sir see five star so we required one more extra tank other than the normal yes, yes a primary settling tank and a small collection tank after that from there the water will get into a uh, biological process so whatever extra is there that you need to take out before it comes okay. into the stp okay understood Okay. Gentlemen, any more questions? So there should be any uh, ratio like for the uh, soap water and uh, sewage water which enters the tank. Uh, sir, the definition of sewage means mm -hmm. it is coming from human origin, right? Okay. supposing okay. you have a dedicated laundry if you look at a mm. five star hotel or a hospital a bigger mm. hospital they have dedicated laundries yes sir okay huge laundries where they use very strong chemicals and whenever municipality or pcb is giving permission to these uh, hotels five star hotels etc they make it a point you need to have a separate etp as well as separate stp and what will the cdp handle the etp should handle the water that is coming from your restaurant and your laundry okay sir okay sir so any excess quantity of anything it could be soap it could be food it could be oil mm -hmm. the composition of sewage will change so the system yes, any sir. system whether it is mbbr sbr it is not likely to work properly now that is the reason in five star hotels what they do is where they require 100 capacity the vendors deliberately make you put 200 cap 200 k they deliberately over design okay sir by over designing we are reducing the possibility of failure but for apartments it is okay right sir that bathroom waste and ah, yes yes uh, very much, very much.
apartments it is okay there is nothing wrong everything okay. combined is only called sewage in apartments okay so that uh, mixture there shouldn't be like any ratio and all that is no, directly we, we can't even discrim- uh, distinguish it should be a combined waste water combined waste water okay thank you sir okay thank you any more questions gentlemen madan any of your team members having any questions team do you have any questions ramesh ramakrishna mr prashant or mr naik mr reshma dash mr dashrath ji any question no sir okay great so do we have your permission to wrap up today's session ladies and gentlemen so madan we can close this session for the day okay sir thank, thank you. you sir thank, thank you, you guys sir. have a great day all of you thank you sir thank you sir thank you